Assalamu alaikum. This is an overview presentation of different techniques and flaps used in closing defects in head and neck surgery. The emphasis in this presentation is on providing a wide range of uh, options so that a surgeon going up the reconstruction ladder would have a full uh, toolbox to choose from the appropriate tool to uh, reconstruct a certain defect. This is the classic reconstructive ladder, arranging the treatment options, techniques, or flaps in an ascending manner, starting from the more simple to the more complex at the top of the ladder. Uh, secondary intention, uh, something that we do quite often with tonsil beds, we just leave it to heal up it's on its own without any suturing to primary intention healing with suturing up of wounds uh, particularly in exposed areas like the face or the neck sometimes we delay this if the wounds are infected if we cannot do this because there isn't enough skin to close up um, a big defect we consider things like skin graft whether a split thickness or full thickness and if we still don't have enough tissues for the repair we may consider priming uh, nearby tissues either by expanding it or priming flaps around the defect and going up the ladder to the use of different uh, flaps and the reconstruction of defects in the face in particular and the head and neck in general and if that is also not possible then we think about uh, using free tissue transfer with microvascular anastomosis. At first, due consideration should be given to relaxed skin tension lines, and there are very good maps of these lines in the face and the head and neck in general. These are lines that lie within or parallel to natural skin creases, wrinkles, or folds and are uh, usually perpendicular to the underlying muscles. Wounds and scars uh, in or parallel to these lines would have the best chance of healing favorably because they are under uh, less tension and also they can hide within these creases. In contrast to uh, scars or wounds perpendicular to these lines would be subjected to more tension and they will also be more noticed much more easier. The second important consideration in the reconstruction of uh, facial defects, uh, the aesthetic subunits of the face. The face consists of six major units, each divided into further uh, smaller subunits. The major units are the forehead, the eyes, and the eyebrows, the nose, and the lips and the chin and the cheek and each are divided into smaller subunits and incisions should ideally be placed in the um, edges between the subunits itself uh, and not cross it and this would provide the best cosmetic outcome and each subunit should be uh, reconstructed separately from the adjoining subunits if you are grafting or covering a subunit with a flap or a graft use another one for the other uh, subunit and if more than 50 percent of a subunit is uh, affected by a lesion or lost in the defect you would consider whether you would want to replace the whole of the subunit um, to get a better cosmetic effect rather than just reconstructing a part of each subunit. While considering the options for closing up a surgical defect like this, particularly in an exposed area like the face, the primary aims are to have a minimal amount of tension in the wound and to avoid having trapdoor or dog ear deformities and to have a neat scar at the end that lies parallel to relaxed skin tension lines. And traditionally, having um, an elliptical or a fusiform shaped defect or transforming a circular or a square defect into an elliptical or a fusiform shape 
helped with all these aims. Uh, the elliptic form defect de would have a 30 degrees angle at the apex and have a length to breadth of 3 to 1. This is to demonstrate the idea behind changing a circular or a square a defect into a fusiform shape. We have here a circular lesion together with a safety margin. This is now excised and a fusiform um, defect is marked but not excised yet. Now if you apply sutures in the middle of the circular defect you will find the dog ears at the two ends of the wound and if one of the dog ears are excised this will flatten the wound but you will still have the other dog ears to be removed in order to have a flat and a straight wound with minimal tension in the middle. The other simple thing that can be done to avoid a dog ear is to apply the rule of halves while putting your sutures in uh, the wound. This entails trying to uh, figure out where is the uh, midpoint of the two sides to join them together and then going from there to the midpoints of this segment and the midpoint of the other segment and between any two points find the midpoint here and the midpoint there to join by suturing. One thing that you can add to this is start by doing a suture at the two ends first uh, before starting suturing in the middle. If you have a suture at one end here and one end on the other side, then you would avoid having the dog ears at the edges. That's the commonest uh, site where you get the dog ears. And then you start in the middle after this and then go back and have another suture here and another suture on the other side and keep doing this, keeping uh, putting your stitches midway between any two stitches so as to bring about even distribution of the sutures and the tension along the, uh, along the entire length of the wound. But you have secured the angles by placing first lateral uh, sutures. The drawback of changing a circular uh, lesion into a fusiform defect is that you lose extra living normal tissues at both ends of the circular defect. And one way around it is to use the hemiplasty technique. This is a tissue sparing technique. It aims to spare a part of the tissues that would have been discarded uh, if you have a fusiform configuration for your defect while still uh, avoiding having dog ears at the two ends and avoiding having extra tension in the middle. Uh, so you place an M incision uh, centered on the edge of the uh, safety margin going out to the uh, edge of the fusiform and, and going back in here. So you have now an emiplasty on one side and another emiplasty on the other side. And this will um, spare this uh, rhomboid shape in both ends of the circular defect and the wound would heal nicely in almost straight line with two uh, smaller extensions on both sides no dog ears and minimal tension but you have to be very careful in suturing this three point junctions much like the conventional way of having an elliptical uh, excision of a lesion together with a safety margin rather than a circular excision to prevent the formation of the dog ears, um, this S plasty provides the same advantage, but rather than having a triangle at the ends, you have now a crescent. This is obviously longer, so you can provide the 3 to 1 ratio or 4 to 1 ratio in a smaller space. And you also have a more acute angle at the end to avoid having any um, dog ears. Uh, it's particularly useful when you want to prevent any tension on the central part of the wound to avoid wound depressing. 
that's useful when you are working over uh, convex surfaces like the nasal bridge or the chin. That's the main advantage of the set of the S plasty. Plus, it can be combined with an M plasty to preserve further tissue. And the configurations of the S plasty is compared to the traditional fusiform shape of the wound. You find that with the S plasty, you have a higher length to breadth ratio within the same distance compared to the uh, traditional fusiform shape. You can also have a more acute angle in here and the central part of the wound is less depressed so there's uh, compared to the uh, traditional method and you also have less bunching up of the edges of the wound uh, ends so you have less of a chance to form a dog ears with the s plus the uh, plus there is a better dispersion of the tension because of the elliptical configuration of the two ends opposite directions they will disperse the wound tension in a better uh, way this is the s plasty technique combined with the m plasty the s plasty is drawn first within the same uh, distance like the traditional fusiform but have more length and more acute angles and now the emboplasties are added to so spare some tissues, have more acute angles here, less of a chance to have dog ears, less tension in the central part as well. Another tissue preserving technique, in addition to the emboplasty or the aceplasty, is the double aceplasty technique. In the traditional elliptical or fusiform wound configuration, the central circular part here contains the lesion and its safety margin. The two uh, triangular pieces at the uh, ends of normal tissue have actually a surface area of more than 150% of the circular part. This waste can be halved if you run an imaginary line bisecting the wound from one apex to the other, and you can only take half on one side and half on the opposite side, preserving some more tissues on uh, both sides. In the double S plasty technique, uh, the central segment containing the lesion and the safety margins are marked together with the usual configuration of the fusiform shape uh, are marked, but only half the extensions are uh, taken uh, with the uh, lesion. Uh, one half on this side and another half on the other side and then you place the sutures obliquely across the central segment from the angle to the midpoint of the central segment here and from the other angle to the opposite um, midpoint of the central segment here you'll have the sutures passing here obliquely diagonally and this will put extra tension on the central compartment but the advantage is we have saved half the amount of the tissues that could have been discarded with. And now we move to the Z plastic technique. If we have a defect, a wound, or a scar, or a web going in an unfavorable direction or with unfavorable dimensions, like if it's too short, for example, this can be corrected using the Z plasty. The fundamental units here will be two triangular flaps, one on each side of the scar or the defect, that are will be transposed. This uh, triangular flap will go down, and this triangular flap will go the other direction up there. And this will have four effects on the defect, depending on the angle at the apex of the triangles. If the angle is 60, for example, then the direction of the scar or the web will be changed 90 degrees. The new direction will be perpendicular to the original direction. There is also a lengthening effect on this segment. It would increase by 75% if the angle here is 60 degrees. And there will be a corresponding decrease in the perpendicular dimension. So this dimension will also contract a little bit. 
and the uh, shape of the wound will be no longer a linear defect or a linear scar it will be it will take the form of the z and depending on the angle at the apex of the triangles um, the configuration of the wound would change if the angle is too acute like if it is for example a 30 degrees angle then the increase in the length will be 25 percent rather than 75 percent if the angle is 45 degrees they will have a 50 percent increase if the angle is more than 60 like if it is 75 degrees for example you get a hundred percent increase in the length of this segment but as the angle increases above 60 degrees a transpositioning of the pla of the flaps becomes a little bit more uh, difficult here is a wound or a scar running in an unfavorable position and we want to correct it by a z plus d we first uh, measure the length of the central limb and then extend two equal lateral limbs with a thread and mark the angles of the lateral limbs and that should be say 60 degrees we divide the 90 degrees in three equal parts and then have 60 degrees equal lengths and if the uh, measurements were right you check this it's not too bad but also if you extend a line from the apices of the two lateral limbs they should join in a line perpendicular to the central limb. Now the flaps are uh, created and transposition. And now you have a better alignment of the central limb parallel to the mesolabial fold. So there would be situations like this one when you have a contracted scar quite close to the eye and affecting the eyelids. And if you want to place one of the limbs of the Z plus the in a relaxed skin tension line, it may not be possible to place the other uh, limb in another relaxed skin tension line in this situation. And because of this, some variations to the standard Z plus the technique may have to be considered, provided that you still have an angle which that is not less than 30 degrees, so as not to jeopardize the uh, viability of the tip of the smaller flap, uh, then unequal angles may be considered. There would be situations in which there would be concerns about the viability of the skin flaps of the uh, Z plus, the, particularly the tip of the flaps where you expect uh, significant reduction in the blood supply and situations where the skin is previously irradiated or has a burn in it uh, you may increase the perfusion to the tip of the created flaps by increasing the angle uh, using curvilinear uh, lines rather than straight lines in the created flap it's important however in such um, situations where there are concerns about the blood supply of the skin is to consider carefully the pros and the cons of doing the Z plus D in the first instance. In some situations we have to consider doing multiple Z plus Ds rather than just a single big uh, Z plus D. In situations where there's a lack of tissue availability or tissue laxity above and below the central limb uh, then you may consider doing the multiple Z plus this in series. Or if you want to extend the central limb a bit more than what you could have achieved with a single Z plus D, you consider the other version, the multiple Z plus this in parallel. And the in series type, the central limb is divided into smaller units, smaller Z plus this. And by this, you only recruit a little amount of tissues above and below the uh, central limb but achieve an equal extension in length of the central limb either uh, you have the z plus is going in the same direction or in opposing direction and the other version the in parallel type the uh, 
uh, central limb remains the same but now you have based on that central limb two sets of the z pluses one with the 90 degrees and the other with the uh, 45 degrees you actually have four flaps here uh, that are going to be transposed and this will give maximum extension of the central limb you can do a four flap or a six flap if that is required and you can vary the angle at the apex as well how much you can increase the length of the central limb with multiple z pluses if we start with the in series type and this is a four centimeter segment if you do one single z plus d with four centimeters central limb and four centimeters lateral limbs you gain a length of 75 uh, percent increase to this four centimeters like another extra three centimeters because we've used the 60 degrees uh, type now if you divide the central segment into four smaller units each one centimeter in diameter you end up having the same extra three centimeters because four multiplied by uh, four smaller one centimeters uh, z pluses multiplied by the 75 percent would all, also give you uh, the, the same uh, amount of extension and the same applies if you have a two centimeters here and a two centimeters there for the opposing uh, version of the multiple uh, uh, z pluses in series now if you are doing the in parallel type if you actually need more extension of the central limb up to 100 percent or 150 percent of its original length then the in parallel uh, type of multiple z pluses will be required either with 45 degrees four flaps then you can expect a hundred percent increase or 45 degrees uh, six flaps when you can have 150 percent increase in the length of the central limb this is the in series type of multiple z plus d we're starting with a four centimeter uh, scar or uh, wound or web and rather than doing uh, one single large z plus d four centimeters lateral and central limb we are doing four smaller z plus d's each with one centimeter uh, in, uh, in length the angles remain 60 degrees each now we are using much less tissues above and below the central limb than we could have used if we are doing a single large um, z plasty. The double opposing z plasty. You start again with the four centimeter segment divided into two opposing z plasties, each with two centimeters. This will give you this time five flaps because there would be an extra flap in between the two opposing z pluses you undermine and mobilize the flaps and then you take the central uh, flap number five in here and interpose it between one and two this would form the uh, first flap to be secured in position and then you transpose the two other flaps laterally Number three would be lateral to one and four would be lateral to two. And once you have them in position, you have extended the central limb by about 75%. Increase in length, so that's an extra three centimeters for a four centimeters scar or wound. This is the basis of the Ferlo operation that we use in the cleft palate repair. If more extension of the central limb is required, then we consider doing the multiple Z pluses in parallel. Now we have this four centimeters in here and we draw 90 degrees above and below. If we are choosing the 45 degrees version, divide these 90 degrees into two 45 degrees above and below. So you have now four different uh, smaller flaps for the multiple z plus d number two and number three are in the middle and this should go to the uh, most lateral parts you transpose each pair and have number two and number three most laterally and when you secure them in position and check the extension and the length you see that you could have gained 
almost 100% increase in length by the in parallel version. By this, we come to the end on the techniques and procedures used in closing a defect in the head and neck. And now we move to the uh, next section of an overview of the flaps used in the reconstruction of defects in head and neck surgery.